All right, so for this problem, we have the infinite square well, where there's some well that extends from zero to A, and it's bounded by two barriers, both going off to positive infinity for the potential. So for this problem, the wave function can't exist out here because that would mean that if the potential was uh, infinity, that means the energy would have to be infinity, and we can't really have a particle with uh, infinite energy um, for this problem. So the only place that it can exist is for some potential that equals zero, right? So if we have some potential that equals zero, uh, we can then solve for the uh, second derivative here. And the purpose of solving for the second derivative is just making it like a neater uh, partial differ or um, differential equation to solve. So that would end up equaling uh, negative 2me over h bar squared times our wave function, which is a function of x. But, um, and the whole part of the problem, the whole point of the problem is to show that you cannot have any energies that are less than or equal to zero for that wave function. That means that, um, that the particle that exists within the well has to have some sort of energy uh, in order for it to, to exist. So some sort of positive energy. So we can start by just taking the case for um, and showing that the, so in order for us to show that the wave function can exist, we have to show that the wave function is equal to zero uh, for this case here. So we'll go ahead and start for the case where the energy is actually equal to zero. Uh, if the energy is equal to zero, then our energy here, this whole term will be zero, and then I'll make this whole term equal to zero, which makes it a pretty easy differential equation to solve. And then, so... If you have a differential equation looks like that, you can just basically just say like by guessing, or if you want to sound fancier in the physics community, you can say by ensemble. But um, just by guessing, you know that the wave function is going to have some form of some constant a times x plus another constant. And uh, so if you take the first derivative of this, this will end up being zero since that's a constant. Uh, the x will go to 1, and this will just stay a constant a. And then if you take the derivative again, you're just going to have some constant a left over, and that will just equal to 0, which fits our differential equation right there. <clears throat> so next, <clears throat> we solve our boundary conditions. We use our boundary conditions so we can solve for these constants here. Um, so solving for... So solving for a and b, solving for our constants, we'll go ahead and use the um, um, the boundary condition at y or sorry psi of a, right? Because um, at right here and right here, the wave function has to go to zero because it cannot exist in these locations here. So those are our boundary conditions. <clears throat> this is a common physics thing you might recall from previous classes. Um, so at y of a or psi of a the wave function is gonna be equal to zero, but we can also throw in um, that for uh, the actual differential equation that we solved here. So zero is equal to a plus b. And we do some algebra. Sorry, this x is actually equal to a because of uh, psi of a. <clears throat> then we do some um, solving here, and then we can solve for uh, a, let's just start with A. A is equal to negative B over A, right? And then we can also do psi, so psi at zero, which would be this boundary condition right here. So the same thing, psi of zero is equal to zero. So A times zero plus B. And we can solve for this and we can easily show that uh, B is actually equal to zero, right? So if b is equal to 0, then this whole term right here goes to 0, which means a is equal to 0, which means that um, this whole wave function is actually equal to 0. So we'll just go ahead and say psi of x is actually equal to 0. The wave function, can, the wave function cannot exist uh, for conditions of energies that are equal to 0. So we're halfway there through the problem. Next, we can do the, um, the next case for, for energies that are less than zero. 
um, we have a different uh, differential equation to solve. So we start back from our double derivative that we solve for. Let me just rewrite it here, right? <clears throat> so for the energies that are less than zero, we know that this term, this is gonna be zero here, and one common way to do it in differential equations to solve for is just to say that this whole thing here is actually equal to some constant called kappa squared, right? So we go ahead and rewrite this in terms of uh, kappa squared psi. All right, and at, so at this point, we gotta, we gotta make another guess here. So what, what function that when you, take the, when you take two derivatives of it always equals some constant squared, but it's like a, some positive value, right? So where the, the function itself doesn't change, but just pops out constant. So it couldn't be sine or cosine because whenever you take the derivatives of those, um, they end up being um, changing the signs and all that stuff. So we can make a, another guess at this where um, <clears throat> if you take the second derivative of it, it's always gonna be some exponential in terms of x, right? Or, or it can be um, some negative exponential in terms of x. So if you take the first derivative of this, it'll be a negative um, kappa times the exponential, and then you take a second derivative, it'll be positive kappa, and the same thing goes for that. So if these are two answers to this differential equation, the linear combination of them can also be the answer. So again, let's be fancy this time and say by ansatz, and ansatz, okay, by guessing. No, no need to be fancy here, I guess. By guessing, we know that the wave function, the solution to that differential equation, has to be some linear combination of the two. And then when you do the linear combinations, you have uh, like extra constants, because any constants can be absorbed into the kappa, right? So we do our, our same dance. We, so now that we have this wave function with some constants, we gotta solve for the, uh, the constants by using the boundary conditions. So we know that, okay, so let's just go ahead and write. So we apply, we apply the boundary conditions where um, psi at zero is equal to zero and, and uh, psi of a is equal to zero too. So we'll go ahead and just use the psi at zero. So psi at zero, well, we know is equal to zero, but when we throw in our zeros into our function up here, and we know that whenever we throw zero up in the second floor of the exponentials, those just go to one. So we just end up having C plus D. Uh, I think we can solve this uh, algebra problem. C equals to negative D, right? And so now we use our next boundary condition where psi of A is equal to zero but this one's a little bit more different. So if we throw it A up uh, in the second floor of the exponentials, you'll get um, oops, C times kappa A plus D times the exponential of negative kappa A, right? But we already found um, that C is actually equal to negative D, so we can all go ahead and throw that in there. So, zero is equal to negative d e kappa a plus d, we're almost there, right? And we go ahead and solve this equation. So that would mean that d e kappa a is equal to d e negative kappa a. So the only way that we can make this work is, whoops, the only way we can make this work is if d is actually equal to zero. I mean, kappa could also equal to zero, but then that would um, kind of violate our initial conditions where e is actually negative. So the only way for this to work under these boundary conditions here is for d to equal to zero, All right? So if d is equal to zero, that means that c is actually equal to zero as well, which means that this whole wave function is equal to zero. Oops. Right, so psi of x is equal to zero for this boundary condition here. 
So we've shown that the wave function cannot exist for negative energies. And if we scroll back up, we have shown that the wave function cannot exist for negative or um, energies equal to zero, which was the whole point of the problem.